SQL has many built-in functions for performing calculations on data, but sometimes your systems might need to handle data such as string or date values in a unique way. User-defined functions are an efficient way to have these custom calculations at your fingertips when analyzing data. On today's episode of BigQuery Spotlight, we're talking about how to create, store, and share user-defined functions in BigQuery, so stick around. So what is a user-defined function, or UDF? A UDF lets you create a reusable function which you define with either another SQL expression or with JavaScript. These functions accept input, perform actions, and then return a value as a result. Once you've created a UDF, you can reference it in queries or when creating logical views, just as you would with built-in functions. Let's see an example use case. Imagine an application that captures data from various sources and requires any text fields to be cleansed before they can be used for analytical purposes. We can write one UDF, we'll call it cleanse string, to tackle this data cleansing problem. The SQL expression that defines the UDF does three things. It trims white spaces, converts text to lowercase, and removes symbols. After creating and defining the UDF, in the next part of the query statement, we can test three different strings of text through our new function. If we run the entire query, we will see the before and after results for each string of text. Once we are happy with the function's performance, we could add it to the query statements that analyze data from our application. This example includes what we call a temporary UDF, meaning it is created and used within one single query statement. However, BigQuery also supports persistent UDFs, which are defined and stored within a specific project and data set, but can be reused across multiple queries and projects. Let's head into the console and see how to create, use, and share a persistent UDF. You can follow along in your own BigQuery sandbox. If you don't have one yet, set one up following the video link below. It's good to note that in the sandbox, your persistent UDFs will remain indefinitely, so they aren't limited to the same 60-day storage limit that tables have within the sandbox. Start in the query editor. Here you'll define your UDF using SQL following a specific syntax. Create or replace function indicates that you would like to create a persistent UDF. This is followed by your project ID and dataset name where you want the UDF to live. Next is the name for the function itself, in this case, cleanse underscore string. Following in parentheses is a comma separated list of all input parameters with their data types that your UDF requires. For cleanse string, you have just one input, which is a string of text. On the next line, the return clause specifies the data type that the function will return. Now it's time to provide a SQL expression that defines how to process the input. This expression uses the SQL function's trim to trim white space and lower to convert the text to lowercase. Then it uses a regular expression to remove any symbols. Now you're ready to click run to create the persistent UDF. You will see it populate under your dataset in the left-hand nav. Selecting the UDF allows you to view, edit, or delete it. But first, let's use it. We'll bring up the same query that we showed earlier in the video, but this time we can reference the persistent UDF without needing to provide its definition within the same query statement. Going forward, you can use this UDF just like you would any other SQL function, directly within your query statements. You will need to reference it with its full name, including the project and dataset in which it resides. In fact, any user with the adequate permission to the dataset containing the UDF, such as the BigQuery data viewer role, can also reference it in their queries. By sharing datasets, you have the potential to create an org-wide library of UDFs, which in turn can ensure business logic is applied consistently and efficiently across your organization. Now that you know how to create and use UDFs in BigQuery, it's time to start writing some of your own. If you're looking for inspiration, or perhaps to just not reinvent the wheel, check out the resources linked below. They include several UDF examples, including many written in JavaScript. Thanks for joining us today for BigQuery Spotlight. Watch out for the next episode, and remember, stay curious.